I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're continuing my two-part series about calibrating the current sensor on your Betaflight F3 board, or really any board you've got that's got a current sensor. Yesterday, I told you how to calibrate the Betaflight F3, and I gave you the sort of foundation of the testing that I was going to do, why I set it up the way I did, and why I think it's a good idea. You're definitely welcome to go back and watch that. I think there's a lot of good information in there. But this one is the one where you're going to see me spin the whirling blades of death and try not to terrify myself and chop my own fingers off and such. Stay tuned for that. I know you will. Okay, so we'll take a look here in the configuration. We can see that this is the default configuration for the current sensor, which I, I think this is default. It's what the board came with anyway. 400 as the scale and zero as the offset. And you can see here we're reading 0.05 amps. The clamp meter is reading 0.29. So they're pretty significantly off. However, it's normal to find that it's, it's off at the very, very low end. It's a little hard to measure both, you know, 70, 80 amps and 0.05 amps accurately on the same device, unless you spend a lot more than we spend. So let's not read too much into that, but let's start building a table of values and um, I'm going to actually pull up Excel here. So now the motors are spinning. I'm going to watch my clamp meter and let's just go to 0 0.5. Down at the low end I'm going to try and have a little more resolution. I'm just going to press the up arrow and the down arrow to get the reading that I want. Well, despite the fact that it was terrifying and I hated every minute of it, I <laughs> did a few more measurements here. Uh, and uh, let's what let's do now is let's make a graph of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select you know, the data, and I'm going to insert a chart, and I'm going to insert a scatter chart. And now ideally what we would like to see is a straight line. And we can see we've almost got a straight line for the lower points. When I went to the higher points, it's not quite as accurate because there was some fluctuation in the, in the measurements. Um, so I almost feel like these higher points, you see how it kind of goes up in a straight line and then boop, like that. What let's do is let's get these last two points out of the graph. And let's just look at the initial one. I think that the line is probably, I don't know, I think, let's, let's just see what we get. So let's graph that. So this is a graph of the meter versus the OSD up to uh, 21 amps. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a best fit line or a trend line. And I'm going to add a linear trend line because I think that this should be linear response. It shouldn't have a curve. It may be slightly off, you know, low or high, but it should be a, a straight line. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to display the equation. We can see the formula here is y equals 0.7364x minus 0.2356. The ideal, you maybe remember from your, your algebra class in high school or wherever, the, the formula for a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, that's this number here, and b is the y-intercept which is here. So the fact that we see that the the perfect thing that we would expect to see if these things were completely calibrated would be um, a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. Uh, if the slope is not 1, that means that our scale is not right. And if the y if the y-intercept is not 0, that means our offset is not correct. Unfortunately, I, I, I'm sure that there's a mathematical formula that you could use to convert this exact number into the scale and offset that you need to use in Betaflight. But unfortunately, I don't know what that is. Maybe I can figure it out. Well, I never did figure out what that formula might be, but I came up with something that I think is even better. It's a simple procedure for calibrating the current sensor. You only have to do two measurements, and I, I found it to be accurate on the, all of the three boards that I tested, uh, and I think you'll find it accurate as well. I'm going to tell you what that is at the end of the video. I got a few other things I want to share with you before I give you the good stuff. You can see here that the offset is not correct 
the offset that we have is zero in beta flight, but uh, it looks from this data like the offset should actually be non-zero because we're not intersecting at the zero point. But I found that whenever I changed the offset, it got wrong. It, it got more wrong than it did right. And I think the right thing to do when you're calibrating is to calibrate the scale first and get the scale as close as you can. And if the, you just can't get the scale correct, then maybe you need to tweak the offset. But I think that the current sensors on many of these boards, if not most of these, if not all of these boards, I don't know for sure, but I think that for most of them, an offset of zero is actually gonna be correct. There's something backwards with the offset and the scale. And that is this, if you want, if you're, if, let's go to the spreadsheet. If your OSD numbers are reading low, what that means is that this line needs to be steeper. Okay, the scale, it needs to be scaled up, but there's something backwards. To make that line steeper and to make the OSD or the beta flight board read higher, you actually reduce this number. So going from a scale of 400 to a scale of 300, oh, I never did make a chart for that one, oh well. You can see that these numbers are getting larger, the OSD numbers are reading larger, and in fact, around the 20 amps, they're actually pretty close to correct. You can see here, I think they got really close to correct, although at lower amps, they weren't quite correct yet. So if you need to make the current sensor read higher, you actually reduce the scale. And likewise, if you wanted to cause the line to shift upwards, you would reduce the offset. Although again, I'll reiterate, I think you should leave the offset at zero unless you just cannot, unless it's consistently off when you try and get the scale correct. And here you can see my final spreadsheet where I was really playing with the offset and scale and really trying to dial in uh, these numbers. And here's the giveaway. Here's the big conclusion that I came to. The response of this current sensor at least, and I bet most of the current sensors we use, is relatively linear. At the very, very low end, it gets off by a little bit, like, like less than an amp. But once you're up in the, in the single digit amps and above, they're very, very linear. And what that means is that there's no need for you to test at five amps and 10 amps and seven amps and nine amps. All this was nonsense. All you really need to do is get two points on this line and you can tell whether your scale is correct. Now, if you have a great big uh, battery test load that can let you discharge 80 amps or without, without scaring your cat and cutting your baby's face off, then that's what you should do. Do a discharge at, at like 60 or 80 amps, do a discharge at like 20 amps, and then based on those two things, figure out whether you need to scale up or scale down. If you don't have a big discharge load that lets you dump 77 amps, you know, it's a little trickier because I'm not sure it's quite as accurate if you were to just do like five and 15 amps, but you could give it a go. Uh, I found more, I thought it was more accurate if you were doing a high number and a middling number like 20 amps and a high number like 60 amps. So that's, that's what you can take away. But the real takeaway if you have a Betaflight F3 board is, I've, for one of my boards, 265 was about right. For one of them, 270 was about right. They were very, very close to correct. And I think that if you have a Betaflight F3 and your current sensor is off, try setting it to the scale. So in other words, you're gonna to go to this here, you're gonna to go to the scale, you're gonna set it to say, let's say 275, 265, just pick a number you like. Somewhere in that range is gonna get you pretty close to correct. And that is, if you, as I said in the first video, if that's the only thing you take from this, I hope that's valuable. That's gonna bring us to the end of this video. I hope now you feel confident calibrating your current sensor. And if you have a current sensor, and you care about it being accurate, you should definitely check it. Don't just trust that it's accurate because it's probably at least a little bit off. And if you're a real nerd like me, you really care about that stuff. Uh, anyway, now you know. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy flying.